this is Dan Alford. Welcome to the Ark Specialties Weld of the Week. Hello, this is Dan Alford with the Ark Specialties Weld of the Week. This is the second episode in our hot wire series. We're going to teach you how to tune all the variables in a hot wire gas tungsten arc process. But first, let's talk about the hot wire system itself. So on the left side of my schematic, you'll see a standard gas tungsten arc or TIG welding system. You have a bottle of argon gas. This is used for the gas shielding of the hot metal. You see the gas line going from the regulator to the black welding torch. Then you have the ceramic gas cup colored in pink below that. And from the bottom, it's a tungsten electrode. So the argon gas provides the shielding. The welding power supply provides the energy for the welding process. The welding power supply is DC. We run the positive electrode to the workpiece, the negative to the tungsten. This is standard gas tungsten arc welding. And on the upper right, you see a wire feeder. This is a way to automate gas tungsten arc welding. You feed the wire in using a feed motor. What makes this process unique is the second power supply on the lower right. This is a hot wire welding power supply. It's AC and constant voltage. We connect one of the electrodes to the workpiece and the other to a contact tip, much like in a MIG torch. This contact tip conducts between 1 and 5 volts and between 10 and 150 amps into the wire. This preheats the wire as it goes into the well puddle and allows you to reduce the current necessary on the gas tungsten arc torch itself. The point of the exercise is to reduce energy, which reduces dilution, which is advantageous in cladding, and it also allows you to weld at higher deposition rates, and in welding productivity is measured in pounds per hour. This is a close-up of one of our hot wire gas tungsten arc bore torches. This is used for cladding the internal diameters of valves, chokes, and pipe. You can see the usual gas cup, the tungsten electrode protruding from the center, and then the copper contact tube, which conducts the electricity from the hot wire into the wire. The wire is fed in from the back, so this torch would travel away from us in this picture. So this is actually two different power supplies you're seeing here. The TIG power supply is connected to the tungsten, and the other portion of the circuit is the workpiece, and the hot wire power supply is connected to the copper contact tip with the other side of the circuit connected to the workpiece also. So on the video now, you're seeing a properly tuned gas tungsten arc hot wire weld. So we're running at relatively low deposition rates. This is at two pounds per hour. You can see that we're about 260 peak amps. The background is half of that. The pulse period is around uh, 0.1 seconds and the background's about 0.1 seconds. The weld volts are around 13. That controls the arc length. Our travel speed is eight inches a minute and our wire feed is 80 inches a minute of 045 wire. Uh, the hot wire is running at 2 volts, which puts in about 79 amps of power. So if you multiply the 2 times 80, that's not that many watts of power, but it's a significant contribution, and it allows us to reduce the overall heat input for the whole weld. So we're only running this part at 20 kilojoules per inch, which is a relatively low heat input. What we're also able to do is create a weld with very low dilution. This is probably around 10% dilution in a single layer. So with two layers, we're well below the 5% dilution required by many corrosion resistant alloy applications. So hot wire gas tungsten arc welding is unique in that all the variables interact. So you have to adjust not only the welding amps, the welding bolts, the wire speed, travel speed, hot wire bolts, and hot wire amps. Changing one can affect others. And so what we're going to do now is adjust each variable independently and show you how we optimize this welding procedure. So you've seen balanced hot wire TIG welding parameters now. Let's adjust one variable at a time. So we're not going to adjust the welding amps, the welding bolts, the travel speed, or the hot wire bolts. We're simply going to change the wire feed speed. We're going up from 80 inches a minute, which is around 2 pounds an hour of 045 Inconel wire, to 110 inches per minute, which is 3 pounds. So that's 50% increase. So as you increase wire speed, you would expect to see a hot wire amperage increase, you don't really see much because you're also in effect increasing stick out by driving that wire underneath the arc and into the puddle. You're actually hitting the bottom of the puddle and you can see that during the pulse background, the wire is bottoming out in the puddle, you're disturbing the arc, you're moving the torch, you're moving the contact tip. So if you're wanting to run these high wire feed speeds, you also need to make an increase in hot wire voltage which will allow that wire to burn off without bottoming out in the bottom of the puddle. So an extreme example of this is I've actually cross-sectioned some wells people had made and found small bits of unfused wire buried in the bottom. So that's an extreme example. But as soon as you see that wire contact tip bouncing back and forth, you know that either your wire feed speed is too high or your hot wire bolts is too low. 
So now let's go to the other extreme on wire feed speed. Let's go to low. So we're going to drop from our optimum 80 inches per minute down to 50 inch a minute wire feed speed. What you see here is we no longer actually running hot wire. The amount of energy coming from the hot wire power supply is sufficient to burn the wire all the way out of the puddle, create a small arc. Unless the wire is in contact with the molten well puddle, you're not getting the desired hot wire effect. One problem with low wire feed speed, it also looks very much like what you would see if you have the wire too close to the tungsten. When the wire is too close to the tungsten, it'll also burn away from the puddle and uh, actually have a short arc between the wire and the workpiece. So you have to determine which variable you're adjusting. But in this case, the wire is well away from the tungsten electrode, and yet it's not contacting the puddle. You see we're still at 2.4 volts hot wire. If you wanted to run at this low wire feed speed, you would also need to reduce the hot wire voltage to allow it to actually hit the puddle and preheat the wire. Because every time the wire is out of the puddle, you're really not conducting any energy. You're not producing any hot wire effect. So in the preceding video, you saw that hot wire voltage and wire feed speed are connected. You have to adjust them in unison. So we had too low a wire feed speed and too high. Now we're going to increase the hot wire voltage from 2 to 3. This looks very much like having the wire feed speed too low. It's out of balance. You're no longer conducting energy because you have an arc between the wire and the workpiece. You're no longer running hot wire. So too high a hot wire voltage is the same condition as too low wire speed. Now we're going to drop from our optimum two volts down to one volt. This looks very much like too much wire feed speed. The wire is stubbing in the bottom of the puddle. So once again, you can solve any of these problems by adjusting either variable. You need a target deposition rate, target well thickness, and then you adjust the wire speed speed to achieve that. And then the second step is to adjust the voltage to match. What you're looking for is the right voltage, which is not stubbing and not melting off. So now we've covered wire feed speed changes and hot wire voltage changes. The third variable I'd like to investigate is electrical stick out. So we're going to change the distance between the contact tip and the workpiece. This is the beauty of constant voltage hot wire power supplies. They compensate automatically. So you can see as we go from a short stick out with a long contact tip to a long stick out with a short contact tip, you increase the electrical resistance heating area and you drop the volts automatically. So it's self-correcting. So why do we consider the first condition to be superior? Because this is hot wire welding. The wire is actually hot and at elevated temperatures you can have oxide problems on the wire if it's outside of the shielding gas. So we prefer to have the shorter stick out with the wire completely covered by the inert gas of the argon shield. So we're simply demonstrating that with a constant voltage hot wire power supply, the power supply automatically compensates when you increase stick out by lowering the current on the hot wire. It increases current when you shorten the stick out. We prefer to run short stick outs to avoid any oxidation issues on the wire. So we're now back to our optimized welding conditions. I'd like to talk about a couple of variables that we didn't change today. For example, welding amps. The whole point of hot wire is to reduce welding amps and add energy through hot wire instead. So we're running 260 amps peak, 50% background. If we were to increase the welding amps, then we could decrease our hot wire energy input, but that's not what we're striving to do. So we're trying to actually minimize weld amps. So what we've done is we've created a good stable weld at 260 amps peak, 130 amps background, and then we balance the hot wire to the wire feed speed. Let's talk about arc voltage. This is what controls the length of the arc between the tungsten and the workpiece. Not only is this a key variable for welding, but with hot wire, it introduces another variable. As you increase the arc voltage, the torch moves away from the part, and since the wire is coming in at a steep angle, the wire actually moves closer to the torch. I've seen people running too many arc volts and then misinterpret the melting of the wire as excessive hot wire volts. This is not the case. You're simply running the wire at the wrong position in the puddle. So that's a key variable you need to adjust is arc voltage to ensure that the wire is impinging back in the puddle a bit away from the arc itself. We have some bonus footage for you now. One of the underappreciated aspects of hot wire is the fact that a preheated wire will actually burn off the wire drawing lubricant off the wire. When they're manufacturing wire, they have to use a lubricant to get through the dyes. Most of this is removed, but not all of it. If it gets into the well puddle, it's a contaminant. 
But if we preheat the wire, we actually burn this wire drawing lubricant off. You can see it coming off as smoke before the wire goes in the puddle. This reduces defects in the weld and improves weld quality. The point I was trying to make today is hot wire welding has many advantages. You can increase deposition rate, which is productivity. You can reduce dilution, which is key on overlay welds. And you can do all this without much additional cost or complexity. The beauty of using AC hot wire with a constant voltage power supply is it's largely self-regulating. So it's not hard to make these adjustments, particularly after you review our video. And then once you make them, it's a very stable process and works extremely well in production with a very low defect rate. I believe that hot wire gas tungsten arc welding is an excellent process for automation. It works extremely well for both cladding and joining, but it's an underutilized process, and I believe that's from lack of familiarity in industry. This is the reason we have several systems in our laboratory. If you think you have a project that might benefit from hot wire, give us a call. Our engineers and welding technicians will develop the welding parameters and make test welds on your parts. We look forward to posting new episodes of the Arc Specialties Weld of the Week. If you're one of the thousands of operators of Arc Specialties equipment around the world and you have a weld that you would like to showcase, please contact us. At Arc Specialties, we thrive on problems. Send us yours.